Hello, royal folks. It's good to see you all here again. This is your regular dose of royal news and analysis. But before we start, please subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon. Thanks. So now, first off, can we talk about how wild it is that we're all obsessing over some birthday tweets? I mean, I get it. Royal drama is like catnip for the media, but sheesh, you'd think these tweets were announcing world peace or something. Now let's break this down a bit. So King Charles, Queen Camilla, Prince William, and Princess Catherine all sent out these very formal, very stiff birthday wishes to Harry, and boy oh boy, did that set tums wagging. I gotta say, those messages were about as warm as a penguin's tushy, wishing the Duke of Sussex a very happy 40th birthday. Ouch, that's the kind of message you'd send to your third cousin twice removed who you met once at a family reunion in 1997. Not exactly brimming with brotherly love, is it? But here's the thing, and I'm gonna get a little conspiratorial on you here. I don't think that coldness was an accident. Nah, this, my friends, is what we in the biz call a power move. See, the royals are playing 4D chess while Harry and Meghan are still figuring out how to set up the checkers board. By sending these messages, they've essentially said, look how gracious and proper we are. We're acknowledging your birthday publicly, even after all the drama. Aren't we just the pinnacle of class? It's like when your passive-aggressive aunt sends you a birthday card with a $5 bill inside. Sure, she remembered your birthday, but that $5 is basically saying, I put in the bare minimum effort required by social norms. You're welcome. Now, some folks are saying, oh, they only did it because it's tradition to acknowledge milestone birthdays for non-working royals. And yeah, that's probably part of it. But let's be real, since when have the royals been slaves to tradition? These are the same people who let Harry marry an American actress divorcee without causing a constitutional crisis. They bend the rules when they want to. No, my friends, this was a calculated move. They're playing the long game here. By acknowledging Harry's birthday, they've denied him and Meghan the chance to play the victim card. Can't you just imagine the headlines if they'd ignored it? Royal SNUB. Harry's milestone birthday ignored by heartless family. Instead, they flipped the script. Now the narrative is all about how magnanimous and forgiving the royals are. It's PR gold, I tell you. But let's talk about that photo for a sec. The one William and Kate used in their tweet? That was some next-level shade throwing. They chose a pic from happier times, when Harry was still a working royal, still part of the Fab Four. And Meghan? Conspicuously absent. It's like they're saying, Remember when you were happy, Harry? Before you ran off to California with she who must not be named. I mean, talk about a visual guilt trip. It's the photographic equivalent of your mom sighing and saying, I just want you to be happy, dear, in that tone that really means, I think you're making a huge mistake, but I'm too polite to say it outright. And you know what? I bet Harry and Meghan are sitting in their Montecito mansion right now, stewing over these messages. They're probably analyzing every word, every punctuation mark, trying to figure out how to spin this into their narrative of victimhood. But here's the kicker. They can't. The royals have outmaneuvered them. If Harry and Meghan complain about these perfectly polite, perfectly proper birthday wishes, they'll look petty and ungrateful. If they don't respond, they miss a chance to grab headlines. It's a lose-lose situation for them. Now, I'm not saying the royals are completely in the right here. This whole situation is messier than a toddler eating spaghetti. There's probably fault on both sides. But in terms of PR strategy, the royals are running circles around the Sussexes. It's actually kind of fascinating to watch, in a car crash you can't look away from kind of way. The royals are masters of the subtle dig, the polite snub. They've had centuries to perfect the art of saying bless your heart in a way that really means go jump in a lake. And poor Harry and Meghan, they're like bulls in a china shop, all loud declarations and dramatic gestures. They're playing checkers while the royals are playing chess, as the saying goes. But you know what? Part of me feels for Harry. I mean, imagine having your 40th birthday turn into this whole thing. When I turned 40, the biggest drama was whether we'd have chocolate or vanilla cake. We had both. I regret nothing. And let's not forget, this is a family we're talking about. A dysfunctional, globally famous family, sure. 
but a family nonetheless. It's sad to see relationships that were once close become so strained and formal. But I guess that's the price of royalty, isn't it? Every interaction, every word, every photo becomes fodder for public consumption and analysis. It must be exhausting, always being on display, always having to consider how every little thing will be perceived. In a way, maybe that's why Harry left. Maybe he thought he could escape all this analysis and scrutiny. But if that was the plan, it's backfired spectacularly. Now he's under even more of a microscope, with every move dissected and discussed ad nauseum. And Meghan. Well, she's probably realizing that marrying into the royal family isn't quite the fairy tale it's cracked up to be. It's more like stepping into a never-ending game of chess where you don't know all the rules and the other players have been practicing for centuries. But hey, at least they're in sunny California now, right? Although I bet there are days when Harry misses the gloomy British weather. At least then, he'd have an excuse for looking so grumpy all the time. In all seriousness, though, this whole birthday drama is just the latest chapter in what's become a very public, very messy family feud. And like all family feuds, it's probably more complicated than any of us outsiders can really understand. We're all sitting here, munching our popcorn and picking sides, but the reality is that these are real people with real feelings. Hurt feelings, angry feelings, confused feelings, all being played out on a global stage. It's easy to forget sometimes that behind all the pomp and ceremony, the titles and the tiaras, these are just people trying to navigate some pretty tricky family dynamics and doing it with the whole world watching and commenting. That's gotta be tough. But let's be real. They're not exactly making it easy on themselves, are they? Every time things start to calm down, someone, and let's be honest, it's usually Harry and Meghan, says or does something to stir the pot again. It's like they can't help themselves. They say they want privacy, but then they're constantly in the public eye. They say they want to forge their own path, but they're still trading on their royal connections. It's a contradiction that's hard to reconcile. And the royals? Well, they're not exactly innocent in all this either. Their stiff upper lip approach might work for some things, but in a family conflict, it comes across as cold and unfeeling. But I guess that's the royal way, isn't it? Keep calm and carry on. Even if your family is falling apart in front of the whole world, it's admirable in a way, but also a bit sad. Imagine not being able to just pick up the phone and hash things out with your brother or your son because everything has to go through official channels. In the end, this birthday drama is just a symptom of a much bigger problem. It's a family in crisis, trying to navigate huge changes and conflicts while maintaining a public image. It's tradition butting up against modernity, duty clashing with personal happiness. And us. We're all just watching from the sidelines, alternately fascinated and horrified, unable to look away from this real-life soap opera. So what's next in the saga of Harry and the Royals? Who knows? But one thing's for sure, it won't be boring. This family has a flair for drama that would make Shakespeare himself say, whoa, maybe tone it down a notch. In the meantime, I hope Harry managed to enjoy his birthday, despite all this hullabaloo. Forty's a big milestone, after all. Maybe he and Meghan had a quiet celebration at home, away from all the noise and speculation. Although knowing them, they probably released a 40-minute documentary about it on Netflix. As for the rest of us, well, we'll keep watching, keep speculating, keep picking sides. Because let's face it, royal drama is the gift that keeps on giving. It's like a never-ending episode of Keeping Up with the Windsors. So happy birthday, Harry, wherever you are. May your 40s bring you peace, happiness, and maybe a few less headline-grabbing family feuds. But not too few. Some of us have YouTube channels to run, after all. And to all of you watching and reading about this drama, remember it's okay to be invested, but let's try to keep a little perspective. At the end of the day, this is a family going through some stuff. They just happen to be doing it in front of billions of people. So stay tuned, my friends, because if there's one thing I've learned from watching the Royals, it's that the drama never stops, and neither do I. Until then, folks, thanks for watching. We'll see you again with some more fascinating news about the Royal family. Thank you.